managers from every farm that we deal with and also from parastatals and your government as well can use that institution. Your Excellency, you appointed me on Social Health Development Authority here. <clears throat> and we are migrating to this new uh, uh, authority from the National Hospital Insurance Fund. We support you very much. People, people who are, including the framework of making sure that as we start registration, everything is in order and everything is going on as planned. But we will support you in this area, some of us, where you are either, as I'm telling you, it has capable members of the board that I've never seen in another board. People who are concerned, your excellence to support you. Only a little bit extend your hand in, a, in, in support of what they are trying to come up with. On the issue of housing, you remember you did lectures about this when last year during Labor Day, and you convinced us as workers that we must support you. And when I asked your ministry, which is in charge, whether workers will have an opportunity to be on that board and after consultation with their office, we are, they are allowed us, as per the current act, to appoint one of us on that particular board. The purpose is we as workers will support it financially. But the eye on that board also when there will be allotment, because we have some shop stewards and workers who have even nowhere to sleep, they will have an opportunity to be housed in this new venture that you have started. And it is not only in Africa. Algeria, they did it. Egypt, they did it. And so many other African countries, they did it. And as I've said, the only problem with our country, Your Excellency, is that we were not used to paying taxes. And when you said everybody should pay tax, it became as an alien issue in this country. Because a normal Kenyan would like to eat without working, would like to make money without earning. And this is where the problem is. I want to end there, Your Excellency. I don't want to tire you. But the last area I want to ask you, because I said I will recognize all good things you have done for workers of this country. And we will continue doing these things. And next year we will be with you. And other years to come. And we will give you support as a pressure group. And when we are called to Kiitwa to Taitika, sis. Research yetu inatuambia, your excellence. But I don't know what is in your pocket. Kama unawesa kunja macho. Because Jacqueline said, oh, general wage increase. If that is employer now, it's not anchored on any law. We must have wages council sit and discuss and see how this general way works. Let me remind my sister here, my twin sister. In 1972, when our economy was not performing, we were doing badly. The then the late president, the founding father of this nation, Mr. Joe Mokinyatu, announced general wage increase at that time of 15% can imagine to everybody and he also asked employers to increase their workforce by 10 percent in order to alleviate or to reduce unemployment in our country which law which law is it angered to anything that comes from the mouth of the president let me tell you people anything that a president that is law that is law so wacha tupereke president pole pole na tumuangalie tumuchunge na ye atatuchunga. Na tunaomba ye atupatie 22.5% or whatever he has put in his pockets. Ama tena nimesema vibaye. Nikiomba yo nimesema vibaye. And let me remind our economists, even when our shilling was being devalued, we said on 14th of January that this devaluation of a shilling, which is going, which was going with very, which was on speedy rush, did not reflect the true economic activities on the ground. 
Because most of you economists, you are around the year 2007 to 2009, when we had the global economic and financial crisis, when Obama was coming in. This did not affect Africa because our economy is driven, our formal economy is driven by an informal economy which has huge and huge of deposits in our banks. We don't rely to money from outside. Mama Chondo, Mama Mboga, Jiwakali. Wanapereka pesa kwa bank kila siku na Chondo. And that is why our economy is steady. And I want to appeal to His Excellency to give infrastructure to our informal sector, to support them and ask governors in various county governments to make sure that markets are built, the informal sector people are not harassed by taxes and so on. These are the people who drive our economy. And Kenya is one. Ata is actually the same as 30%. Now, and we work hard to redouble our efforts in various places to correct the economic anomaly. We will still spur economic growth. We thank you, Your Excellency, the President. Let me I invite our Honorable Minister for Labor, who has done a commendable job, to make her remarks and, and, and follow the rest of the protocol. I thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Brother Francis Atuoli. Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces. Your Excellency, Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Honorable Judges present, Cabinet Secretaries, colleagues present. Honorable Johnson Sakaja, the Governor of Nairobi County. Principal Secretaries present, the Chairman and Executive Board Members of KOTU, Brother Francis Atuoli, the Secretary General KOTU Kenya, Sister Jacqueline Mugo, the Executive Director FKE, Chairs of Committees of Parliament and Members of Parliament present, Ambassadors and High Commissioners present, all distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Hamjambo. It is an honor to mark the 59th International Labor Day in the company of esteemed workers gathered here at Uhuru Gardens, Nairobi. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to you, Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya, for honoring our invitation once again to celebrate with workers on this special day. This is a testament of Your Excellency's commitment to the welfare of workers. We deeply appreciate this great gesture. Today, we join hands with millions around the world to observe the International Labor Day, a day in which trade unions celebrate workers and the fruits of their labor. The theme of this year's celebration, Kenya's workers stand for advanced information technology training to drive our digital economy. It aligns seamlessly with the bottom-up economic transformation agenda 2023 to 2027, as it underscores the need for readiness to adapt to the changing world of work brought about by digitalization. The emergency of the gig economy signifies a profound shift in employment dynamics across the world as countries embrace rapid digitalization of economic activities in e-commerce and employment. The demand for labor in the digital economy necessitates the need to devise new strategies in governance and policy framework for fair distribution of gains and opportunities. The new jobs in the digital and gig economy come with limitations on how work is organized and regulated with workers having limited job security, restricted access to social protection, career progression, 
and the lack in the right to organize collectively. Conscious of these challenges, we note that constructive dialogue, drawing the trapatite and other stakeholders, is crucial to ensure decent work for all. We now have a community of practice, and my ministry is collaborating with stakeholders to review labor laws in this regard. Your Excellency, my ministry has put in place additional measures to ensure skills development is responsive to the labor market demand. Our government launched the National Skills Inventory to map out the skills of all Kenyans seeking employment to enhance employability locally and abroad. In the pursuit to address the high unemployment rate, government has continued to engage with other governments who have a high demand for labor through initiating negotiation of bilateral labor agreements or memorandum of understanding to provide safe and orderly labor migration. We have retained foreign employment on top of our agenda, and so far we have pursued and signed four bilateral labor agreements, and seven are at, are at an advanced stage of negotiation, while 14 are in draft form. The aim is not only to provide overseas opportunities, but also to encourage the return of skilled workers with enhanced capabilities. Encouragingly, there are 254,312 active jobs that have been advertised by the private recruitment agencies on the National Employment Authority website at www.niaims.go.ke. Job seekers are encouraged to register through the website and apply for the jobs. Your Excellency, in our quest to foster workplace harmony and acceptable conditions of work, the Labor Inspectorate has diligently processed over 11,000 labor disputes and conducted more than 12,000 workplace inspections and facilitated registration of an additional 334 collective bargaining agreements in the last one year. My ministry remains steadfast in engaging social partners, and I once more call upon the healthcare workers and employers to reconsider their position for a win-win outcome. We need normalcy to be restored in the health sector to bring to an end the suffering of our people. In recalling the Daban call to action on elimination of child labor by 2025, my ministry recently joined the Alliance 8.7 on a pathfinder, as a pathfinder country and further established seven county child labor committees to address child labor issues at the county levels. These efforts underscore our unwavering dedication to uphold children's rights to social and educational development. Your Excellency, social protection is a mandate of my ministry, and we continue to implement the cash transfer programs with an increase in social assistance coverage to orphans and vulnerable children and persons living with disabilities, as well as the Inua Jamii program for the elderly persons where government has committed 28 billion. In a move to afford social security to those in the informal sector, we have intensified campaigns to promote Haba Haba program under NSSF, where members can access their savings plan through their mobile phones by dialing star 303 hash. To give members a chance to save 25 shillings a day, a minimum of 25 shillings a day with an option of withdrawing 50% of their contribution after consistently contributing for a minimum of five years. My ministry is also developing bills to enhance the legal framework for protection of labor, which include the Labor Migration Management Bill, the Social Protection Bill 2024, the Work Injury Compensation Act Bill, Occupational Safety and Health Bill, 
National Productivity and Competitiveness Council Bill, among others, which are at various stages of development. Your Excellency, on the international scene, my ministry has also made good progress towards the ratification of Convention 189 on domestic workers and Convention 190 on violence and harassment. Public participation in public fora and media platforms are ongoing to build consensus and we will soon present the country position to cabinet for way forward. I thank all stakeholders involved, including our social partners, for their submissions and guidance. Allow me, Your Excellency, to appreciate KOTU, Kenya Branch, and FKE for their continued support to my ministry locally and internationally. As members of ILO governing body, they have effectively represented the country's interests and ensure that we have the necessary technical and financial support. In comparison to other countries in the region, Kenya has a total of 12 programs supported by ILO. As I conclude, I wish to emphasize the importance of strengthening the social dialogue institutions by increasing the funding to enhance their operations to curb the recurrent countrywide industrial actions. Finally, I wish to state that my ministry stands in solidarity with employers and workers and will guard their fundamental principles and rights at work, as well as ensure social justice for all. We cannot forget our brothers and sisters who have perished due to the devastating floods, those who have been rendered homeless and the ones in hospitals. Let us all stand with them in prayers as well as support them where we can. It is now my humble pleasure to welcome His Excellency Honre Borigadi Gashagwa, the Deputy President, to make his address and invite you, Your Excellency, the President of Kenya. Karibu, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya,